Hello everyone, this is Zook, and today I'm doing a battle cruiser. But before I do the battle cruiser, a couple of things. First off, I have not gotten an answer from Adobe, because I know a lot of people have asked about it. When I do get an answer, I'll be sure to post it all over the place, so you'll know. Don't worry about it. Secondly, for the people that still have no idea what these videos are about, this is a drawing with a commentary by the person drawing. This is not Total Biscuit and this is not StarCraft Strategy. The reason I'm saying this is because still after a month and a half there are people posting stupid hateful comments about uh, them thinking that this was uh, pff, uh, battle cruiser rush strategy 10 minute build etc. No, it's not. If you actually take the five seconds to, ch to read the description of the video, and maybe even check my channel for that matter, that's an extra three seconds right there, then you'll realize that these videos are drawing videos and not StarCraft strategy, therefore saving your s yourself the trouble of looking like a fool on YouTube and getting banned from various channels. Enough with the stupid hateful comments. If you don't want to watch this video, get the f*** out. Right now, get out. Thirdly, no more suggestions. I have hundreds of suggestions. I have suggestions for every single unit in StarCraft, every single unit in Warhammer, every single unit in Warcraft. Enough already. I got it. I know what units are out there. I don't need people telling me, draw this, draw that, <laughs> draw... <laughs> Enough. If you want to watch the video and post something relevant, sure, if you don't want to post something relevant, shut the f*** up. Enough with the draw a colossus, draw this, draw that, draw that. I don't wanna, okay? I'm not getting paid for this. When one of you sends me a hundred bucks and says, draw this, then I'll do it. Until then, no. Now, back to the video. Now, I chose the battle cruiser because I believe it is the most challenging unit in StarCraft 2 to draw at the moment. Um, the reason for that was. I have been drawing a lot of organic shit lately, so I wanted to deviate a bit and sort of test myself on something mechanical. Um, it's good to keep it diverse, because then I, I lose practice on mechanical things. So I took the battle cruiser and I spent a whopping f almost five hours on it. It was very painstaking. I've been doing this ever since I woke up at 7.30 today and now it's 4.30. So yeah, it's it's been a while. Not to mention that Premiere Pro has been f***ing with my shit for the past hour and a half because my webcam records in WMV and Premiere Pro has big problems importing that particular format. Anyway, um, I used reference, obviously, because <laughs> I'll be damned if I can remember every single tiny little detail on this uh, piece of scrap metal. So I put it in perspective and I drew a very light sketch and then I grabbed a ruler. So, oh my god, yes, I am using a ruler. Uh, I don't think there's any shame in that, especially considering that architects use it and a lot of people that draw mechanical units use it. So it's really no big deal. A lot of it is done in freehand, however. But I chose the ruler for the most significant parts, like the wings on the side and the head and uh, some of the details. Like the, the small details are done in freehand and the general shape of the body is done by using a ruler. Because there's just, I mean, there's just so many straight lines that it's, you know, it doesn't matter how good you are, you're bound to screw it up and make it look warped at some point. So it's just better safe than sorry just use a ruler. But yeah, I mean, it wasn't great. Uh, it wasn't fantastic just because I suck at drawing mechanical things. I'm sure I'll get better after doing this for six hours. I could probably draw a siege tank now with uh, my feet. But anyway, um, I was actually considering leaving it in wireframe mode because it kind of looks okay. I used um, a mechanical pencil for, this, for the thin lines and, well, the mechanical pencil is, uh, is B, hardness. And I use a 7B pencil for the 7B pencil for the very thick lines. I don't know what's wrong with my diction today. I sound like an idiot. Anyway, I also use the 4B for the medium thick lines. The black lines are supposed to be basically spaces in between the parts. So I just drew them as black lines. That's more than enough to show the viewer that those are indeed black spaces. Um, but yeah, I was pondering leaving it in wireframe mode, but when I was done with it, uh, it didn't 
look very 3D. It didn't look great, so I ended up shading it as well. And the shading part took the least bit of time, actually. It was... What took most time was the planning. Uh, thinking in between. I mean, I, I took really long breaks um, every half hour. Well, really long being like 10 minutes, which is double my usual. Just because it's... When you draw something geometric, like a battle cruiser or any th sort of mechanical unit, it's easier for the eye to get used to what you're seeing than when you're drawing something organic. Because organic things, you know, they, they you see organic things on a daily basis. You see your mom or your dad, you know. So things that are, are, are really high tech and mechanical, like this, like the battle cruiser, it's easier to to screw up and to make things look warped, just because your eye is doesn't really know what's supposed to look right. But if you take a break and come back to it, you get a f you'll get a fresh perspective on it, and it's easier to to get it right. And I'm sure I didn't get a lot of things right in this um, in this unit because there are just so many overlapping shapes, even straight shapes that are overlapping are really hard to to draw in perspective accurately because you don't know how they combine with each other and where one ends and when the o when the other begins, which is why improvising is such a great thing because it if you improvise you have room for mistake and you don't have to actually go by the uh, blueprint or in this case the 3d character model because this looks far from identical to an actual battle cruiser the shape is pretty much the same but the small details and the way the parts combine are obviously different just because it's in the end it's harder to replicate perfectly than to create and anyone that does uh, replicas of famous paintings will say this thing. It's much harder to actually draw every detail <coughs> if you're looking at something, trying to replicate the proportions, than actually creating something yourself. Which is why I improvise a lot. It's It saves me a lot of time. If I were to draw every single vein on a you know, Zerg creature or every single bump or every, every, every single like wart or fang or anything, that would take me a whole day for a drawing that in the end looks pretty much the same as if I would have improvised a lot of things. Yeah, so improvisation is a great thing and it's especially good for mechanical things where oh my god, there's just so many details, especially on the, on a battle cruiser. I mean, the battle cruiser is supposed to be enormous, you know, in proportion to a human. It's supposed to be, you know, you've seen the animations and the movies and the cinematics. It's supposed to be like the size of five buildings. So, there are just so many details that go that go on there even more so than on a um, on a sc on a smaller scale unit like a Thor or a siege tank simply because you know it's gigantic so even so there aren't as many details as there could have been but i just said that you know instead of adding details i might as well work on improving the general shape and like the shading and everything and even in this case the um, the light comes from the top left but if i were to shade accurately like based on one single light source coming from the top left, a lot of it would be in black, a lot of the unit. Just because some parts overlap each other so many times and in such enclosed spaces that light would basically be impossible to get to those spots. So I left a bit of room for like ambient lighting, so to say, like lighting from all directions, just to make the some of the, de some of the details visible. Else a lot of it would be in black. And I, I would probably be fine with that because <laughs> it means less work for me. But if I want to make something decent looking, then gotta leave room to see all the details and tiny little holes and everything. Now one key thing to remember when shading something mechanical like this is to uh, make sure that the, when the parts combine there's always one rim will be lit. Usually it's the rim that's facing the light, aka top left one. So if you have a square, the top and the left side will be lit and the rest of the square will be shaded. And this is basically what makes or breaks the drawing. This is what gives it a sense of 3D or a sense of, you know, parts popping out of it. Because if you shade it, one shade, it's just going to be like, you know, a coloring book. It's going to have no 3D feel to it whatsoever. So, <clears throat> you know, you can, like, if you see on the head, it has that round cockpit or whatever it is that um, is where it meets the body. So in that case, that shape is square and round at the same time. Like it has one, two, three, four, five sides and the corners are rounded. And the plates on the bottom, not on the bottom, but on the sides are also rounded, but they're also square. So 
it has a lot of complex shapes like that and the way to to draw them to make them look 3D is to leave room for the the light on the rim and also the corners the rounded corners corners need to be lit as well because then it won't seem round so if you do decide to draw something like this um, when you go in with the pencil just start in the middle and work your way towards the edges the middle will most likely be shaded unless it's spherical therefore popping out so that's uh, one of the key things to to keep in mind when drawing something like this but I hope you enjoyed the video and don't get mad at me for flaming idiots but I just can't help it and I'll see you next time